Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the fourth part of GATE Smart Question series. In this series, we are taking those questions which are asked in GATE exam and they are like they are put up in the exam in a smarter way and their uh, chances of making mistakes are quite high, right? I have already made three more parts of it. Uh, you will find all of the links in the description. Also, I will link the playlist in this i button so you can watch the entire playlist of GATE Smart Question series or GATE or you can say GATE SQS series, right? Today's question I'm going to take from surface chemistry, uh, particularly from Langmuir adsorption isotherm. Now today's question which we are going to discuss are not exactly kind of a smart questions which gate put up. It's like they take or they put the language of the question in such a way that you often overlook the concept and you the chances of making mistakes are quite high. So that's the entire thing about it. The question which I'm going to take tonight is a numerical answer type question. And I'll tell you that how they play with the words and how they try to befool you or try to entrap you in the in their language of the question. All right. So both these things we are going to discuss in this particular class in this particular video. So do watch it till end. Before jumping into the video, let me tell the homework question of the previous video. Now in the previous video, I have given you a homework where I have said to find out the total crystal field stabilization energy of the following complexes. These were the three questions which I have given you. Many of you have answered it correctly. And I'm very happy to see that you all are getting the concept. You are able to solve the questions. Let me tell you the concepts and let me tell you the answers first very quickly. All right. All right. So I have just done all the questions uh, so that I can save some of your time. So the question were that find the total CFSC of the following complexes. We were having four complexes over here. If you look upon the first option, cobalt is in plus three oxidation state. And I have always told you, I have emphasized on this thing that cobalt Although the ligand seems to be a weak field ligand over here, which is water, but since cobalt is in plus three oxidation state with water or with any oxygen or nitrogen donor ligand, it is going to form a low spin complex. Okay, so it is not the property of the ligand over here, but the property of the metal itself. So cobalt plus three forms low spin complex with nitrogen and oxygen donor ligands. Considering that part, this is how the electrons are going to be filled over here in cobalt plus three low spin. Uh, to calculate CFSC, we also have to look upon the high spin for, uh, form of it. So if you check out, high spin is already having one pairing. So that means these are the two extra pairing which we are getting over here. If we have to calculate the CFSE for this, that is going to come up minus 2.4 delta O and plus 2P. These 2P are extra pairing which we are getting uh, apart from this high spin complex. Right? Now, looking upon the second option, this was pretty easy. Iron is in plus three state. It is always like it, over here. It is going to form a high spin complex D5 system. D5 system, you all know all the electrons are filled equally in all the orbitals. So CFSE is going to become zero here. No pairing concept over here because it's a high spin complex. Looking upon the third option where iron is in plus four oxidation state. If you calculate the oxidation state of iron over here, it is plus four. Now, if it is plus four oxidation state, that means he, if you fill the electrons in and, and that to a low spin complex because uh, the ligand over here is a strong donor ligand, right? So this is how you are going to fill the electrons. If you look upon the D4 uh, high spin form of it, there is no pairing which is observed and in the low spin you get one pairing. So that means this is the extra pairing which we are getting over here. When you calculate the CFSE for the same you are going to get 1 minus 1.6 delta O and plus P or 1P. Now many of you have answered it correctly. A lot of um, answers I have got on the previous video. And to all those who have not been able to do it correctly or those who have done some silly mistakes, it's a part of learning. It's fine. We have uh, like we are doing these things so that we can learn, right? All right. So today we are going to take a question from surface chemistry, particularly from Langmuir adsorption isotherm. As I said in the starting of the video, that this question is going to be a numerical answer type question. The question says that the dissociative chemisorption of X2 on a metal surface follows Langmuir adsorption isotherm. The ratio of rate constant of the adsorption and desorption process is 4 atm inverse. The fractional surface coverage of X which is adsorbed at 1 atm pressure is how much, right? So that's what they are trying to ask you. So basically they are giving you a, a dissociative chemisorption of some metal which is X2 and they have given you that what is the ratio of adsorption and desorption process. Now, uh, see everything is given to you in the question. It's very, very, very straightforward question. But the scope of making mistake is quite, quite, quite high in this particular case, right? Now, let me show you where 
people do mistake and how to solve this question now if you have studied language adsorption isotherm i guess you know this that the surface coverage that is theta is calculated as kp upon 1 plus kp where k is the uh, ratio of uh, basically rate constant for adsorption and desorption so k is nothing but it is k adsorption divided by k desorption basically what happens that when the adsorption takes place both the things are happening simultaneously adsorption and desorption the so ratio of both of them is denoted as k p is basically the pressure so you are given with the values of both of them Gen you don't have to actually calculate anything they have given you that the ratio of rate constant for adsorption and desorption that means k k adsorption divided by k desorption is given to you as 4 atm inverse and the pressure at which they are asking is 1 atm now people know this and they will put this and they will get the answer and what they will do is theta is equals to 4 into 1 divided by 1 plus 4 uh, into 1 so what they will be expecting is something around 4 divided by 1 plus 4 that is going to give us 4 upon 5 and the answer that way they will get is 0 0.8 and uh, that should be done and they will write down that answer and they think that they have done it correctly but that's where they know that this is the thing which people will do and that's what they are trying to trick you with so the answer is not 0 0.8 obviously this is not the correct way of doing this question the correct way or the correct formula is actually not theta is equals to kp upon 1 plus kp this is what we study generally but uh, when there is a dissociation or association which is happening in that case the formula becomes this to the power 1 by n and this to the power 1 by n so this is basically the powers are over here and these power this value of n n is the number of species in which uh, dissolved dissociation or association is taking place now considering that all if i put everything now so now the correct value now the exact value of calculating theta is going to be how much that is going to be uh, like 4 into 1 whole to the power 1 by 2 divided by 1 plus 4 into 1 whole to the power 1 by 2 now 2 is here because this is x2 it is going to dissociate into two species only right uh, that is not going to be explained but that is self understood so if you write down this becomes under root 4 divided by 1 plus under root 4 which is nothing but 2 divided by uh, 1 plus 2 which is nothing but 2.3 and that's where your answer is going to come up and the answer is going to be 0 0.67 or 0 0.66 that is going to be this is going to be your correct answer so the surface coverage is nowhere near to 0 0.8 the correct answer is 0 0.67 and this is how they try to trick you the only thing is people forget that this is 1 by n over here and i have included this in this series so that in future because this type of question has been repeated two or three times in gate exam i will give you one more uh, as example of that and i will show you that how uh, gate again tries to trick with the same uh, type of technique so let me take you to the another question of it all right so here is a question this was asked in gate 2018 exam and again this is based upon the same concept of uh, Langmuir adsorption isotherm here it says that for a low pre partial pressure of ozone O3 the adsorption of ozone on graphite surface is fully dissociative in nature right and follows Langmuir isotherm under these condition if the dependence of the surface coverage of graphite that is theta on the partial pressure of the ozone that is PO3 is given by theta is proportional to PO3 to the power x what will be the value of x okay now again i am going to consider this as a homework question to you don't cheat and don't go and look at the answer key of gate 2018 i will suggest you to try in it try it out it's pretty simple it's very easy i have already explained you what you have to take care of and if you are taking care of that thing you will get the correct answer you just have to tell what will be this x equals to right i want answers in the comment sections below do let me know in the comment section what answer you guys are thinking so that's it for this video i hope you guys understood the concept and i hope you guys will not make these silly mistakes in the upcoming uh, exam or in the upcoming places wherever this is going to be asked uh, i will see you in the next video with a new smart question by gate and that's it for this video thank you so much for watching the answer for this video will be discussed in the next part so that's all from my side thank you so much have a great day bye bye hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here i teach for the csir ugc net category 
and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes you have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda that's it for this thank you so much